Good morning. Nine o'clock Thursday, December twenty first, twenty twenty three. Christmas is upon us. Hi, Miss Faye. How's things in Southeast Kansas today? <clears throat> for you guys. Mr. Wayne. Glad you're on here. Dennis. Good morning. Kara Lee. <clears throat> Glad you're on here today. Peggy. The Akronites have made it. <laughs> Miss Betty. <clears throat> Rayanne. Glad to see you guys on here this morning. All right. <clears throat> Let's um, quite a few more piling on here too. So we'll uh, anyway. Um, today is uh, good. I'm glad it went well. So we will pray for Mark. Mark had some uh, skin cancer removed. So let's. Uh, keep Mark in our prayers. Keep Joe Camacho in our prayers. Uh, he didn't find out anything yesterday. Obviously, they just took the biopsy. So they said five to seven days, working days. So hopefully they will hear next week sometime. Uh, so <clears throat> definitely need to pray for one another. So pray for Mark Plank. Pray for Joe Camacho. Pray for each other. Pray for those that uh, kind of have some struggles through this time. Uh, I know that they would appreciate that. So, uh, Rayanne, uh, her brother had had some uh, removed yesterday too. Was it skin cancer? Uh, Jan, uh, today is James Day. He flies in this afternoon, so they get they're supposed to fly get to the Denver airport at three fifteen. So they better hurry up. We need to get things moving. <clears throat> I <clears throat> talked to Carrot this morning. She was getting the rest of the stuff packed. You ladies know how that goes when you have a baby. Uh, all of a sudden, there's a whole lot more luggage. <laughs> uh, so, yes, we're so excited. I, best Christmas present in the world is this little grandbaby. So uh, excited, excited to see the little guy and... Uh, see Matt and Kareth, and it's going to be a good week. So uh, pray for also, uh, pray for Kathy Zwetzig. Uh, her daughter, um, Melinda, passed away last night. And uh, so I think she was 55, same age as I am. Um, so pray for uh, Kathy's family. <clears throat> and... Uh, uh, Charlie is her is uh, Melinda's husband. Pray for him. Mary is uh, Melinda's daughter. So pray for them. I know that they would appreciate that. And guys that are part of our church family, uh, we will have the service. Not sure when yet. Um, they she will be buried in Fort Logan Cemetery. Uh, Charlie was a veteran, um, so I think it will probably. Um, <clears throat> be determined after they set that date. So not sure yet on the dates or anything. I think they would like probably have a meal too. And I don't think it'll be a very big service, uh, but they, uh, yeah, it, it'll be uh, one that we can help with and, and hopefully be a blessing too. So, all right. So um, there's one more thing. <clears throat> I, I don't know why I do this. I I, uh, I have the app on my phone for the Fort Morgan Times, and that, that thing has become so liberal. It's owned by some company out of Boulder, so that ought to tell you something, right? But um, anyway, they and I mentioned this before. This last Sunday, they had they they had a uh, oh what was it called a Posada, I think is what it was in Fort Morgan at the city park and then they marched down to like one Morgan County, I think is where they went to. And, um, anyway, it, it was all, uh, 
kind of uh, d directed by and organized by a, a group called the American Friends Service Committee, and it's based out of Denver. Um, and and uh, <clears throat> so, um, oh yeah, and pray for Susan. Susan, I'm I'm glad you got through that crazy MRI. Those are not fun at all. So. So pray for Joe Camacho, pray for Mark Plank, pray for Kathy Zwetzig, and pray for Susan Bennett. Um, pray for all four of them that they can uh, just, uh, Lord, do what needs to be done there in each situation, right? So um, <clears throat> back to this, um, they uh, what they're wanting is they, they want all illegals to be uh, immediately uh, recognized as uh, permanent residents, and so no, uh, no process at all. They they just want them to uh, be able to be declared uh, legal and have a legal status. And the the interesting thing, this is the part. This is why I bring this up. Not the political side of things. You know, they can. Everybody has their own ideas. Whatever. I don't care. But don't don't make it biblical. Okay. And that's what they did. They they do this Posada, and they uh, had this uh, time on Sunday, and they were saying <clears throat> that they were reenacting when Mary and Joseph left Nazareth and came into Bethlehem, and they and they want to say that as they were coming into Bethlehem. Uh, and, and their journey, that it represents the journey of these illegals coming into America. Um, I, I have some news for you. First of all, uh, we know that Joseph was a, a legal resident of Bethlehem. And that's why he was coming back to Bethlehem for a census, right? And also to pay taxes. <laughs> <clears throat> Most illegals aren't paying taxes. <clears throat> they uh, don't have a social security card or they get an illegal one. Um, <clears throat> and uh, there is a process. There, there is a process. And this is for every country, guys. If you want to become a citizen of that country, you have a process to go through. And uh, these that are trying to come into our country... In the past, we have uh, had this process set up so that they they came in legally and, and they could be vetted. And they also go through classes to understand what our Constitution says and what our country is and, and who we are as Americans. And But uh, today we have these lunatic politicians who are happy to let these uh, illegals come in and give them a voter identification card and so that they can, uh, again, have <clears throat> millions of votes that should not count. And, <clears throat> I mean, so anyway, we're going to leave the politics out of this, but do not try to compare what these illegals are doing coming into our country do not compare it to the journey that Mary and Joseph took from Nazareth to, to Bethlehem. Not the same. You know, it is not the same. <clears throat> and I, I, I've seen people use the uh, Old Testament where uh, God told Israel, those that were journeying from other tribes, to uh, welcome them through. And, and uh, uh, fine, we can be kind, but however... To become an Israelite, they had a process that they had to go through to become uh, a, a legal resident and, and really a Jew. And so, uh, and, and even then, they were uh, somewhat different than the others because of their genealogy. So, oh, people love, love, love to take the Bible completely out of the context that it's in and and uh, try to make it fit what they want. Let's quit doing that, you know, and let's uh, try to do our best to, to be what God wants us to be. And I, look, I'm, I'm sorry for these guys that live in these third world countries that want out of there. 
Absolutely. I'd want out of there too, but tr come here, do it legally. I, I mean, there, and there are, you know, many that are doing that, you know, and Millennial Trump was just at a, at a swearing in ceremony of, of those who did it the, the correct way. And so, but we have all of these characters that are coming in and in the cover of darkness and, and, uh, Anyway, it's just a mockery, really. It, it truly is a mockery of those that are supposed to be the defending of the Constitution are the ones that truly are trampling it uh, in our in our day and age. So, anyway, that's uh, and and so here it is. You know, we got to come back to to focus. All right, and and I don't mean to make this one political today. They they want to take the Bible and support their political position. And that's the reason that I brought it up. Don't take the Bible out of context and make it say something that it doesn't say, right? And, and, and let's not do that. But, and, and really, instead of just griping about it, and, and I need to do this better, maybe we ought to be praying about it. And look at Psalm 140. This is powerful and shows us how we can be praying about these situations. He says in verse one, Deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man. Preserve me from the violent man, which imagine mischiefs in their heart. Continually are they gathered together for war. It, you know, it, it used to be, it seemed like anyway, that that um, the, the Democrats were crying for peace and, and they didn't want war anywhere. And now we're in a society and, and now we're in the political leanings of things where it looks like our politicians are heading more for war all every day. I, I mean, uh, who would have ever thought? I don't want to go to war. I don't want our country in war. I, I we need to defend ourselves, and and uh, but we don't need to be going out. But here they are continue. Are they gathered together for war? They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Adder's poison is under their lips. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from the violent man who have purposed to overthrow my goings. I mean, we do live in a wicked world. We need to know that. We need to know that there's a battle going on for our um, spiritual walk and our spiritual lives and, and after our family, trying to divert our family from living for God. And, and, and then it goes on, and he says this in verse 8, Grant not, O Lord, the desires of the wicked, Further not his wicked device, lest they exalt themselves. Let's pray that, right? Let's, first of all, make sure we walk humbly. Let us be kind. Let us be loving to those around us. Let us tell people about Jesus, right? Let's stand, earnestly contend for the faith, right? And, and, and walk according to that. But also, God, we pray and ask that the desires of these who are morally reprobate and 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 who are wicked in their policies that they're making, whatever they may be, and trying to tell us that that we must turn from what the Bible says and, and do what society says, Lord, we're, we're just asking that you do not allow this to happen and grant not the desires of the wicked, further not his wicked device. Lord, stop them from doing these things. And then in verse 12, let's do so with confidence. I know that the Lord will maintain the cause of the afflicted and the right of the poor. Surely the righteous shall give thanks unto thy name. The upright shall dwell in thy presence. And so here we see, what, what do we do? We, we need to give this to God and we need to pray. We need to, so I was saying last night <clears throat> in church, that I had some good advice that there was this man that we were we were in Ephesians chapter six and and <clears throat> there comes a time where we we have to understand that the the fleshly battle that we have is a spiritual battle also. And if we can have our mind set correctly to thinking on the things of God, doing the things of God, then it can also help us to control the flesh and and the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, right? And so he said, one practice that we ought to do is try to say no to ourselves 25 times a day. 
<laughs> 25 times a day, we need to uh, do that. And, and so here it says, Surely the righteous shall give thanks unto thy name. The upright shall dwell in thy presence. You know, we, we live in a self-indulgent society today. Whatever the body wants, that's what we need to give it. Whatever the eyes want, we get it. Whatever the flesh wants, we do it. Whatever our pride is exalting us to do, we do that. And, and instead of <clears throat> being like the rest of the world, let's learn to tell ourselves no on several things. Now, we don't have to say no on everything, but there are many things we can say no to. Uh, and, and we ought to. And, and we ought to uh, <clears throat> walk uprightly and, and uh, do the right thing and, and teach our children the same thing. Just because a child wants something doesn't mean that they always need to get it, right? Same way in our own lives. And <clears throat> otherwise, what we do is, is we, we raise these petulant children that uh, grow up and then are spoiled rotten and, and think that the world uh, rotates around them and they deserve everything given to them. And, and that's, that's kind of where we're at. We're, we're, we have adults now about two generations of adults that are thinking that, and uh, it, it's not working at all. And as a matter of fact, it's bringing destruction in our lives. Look, Proverbs 30, verse 17 says this, The eye that mocketh at his father <clears throat> and despiseth to obey his mother, the ravens of the valley shall pick it out, and the young eagles shall eat it. Can I tell you that, you know what God is saying there? If you raise children that are disobedient, that that are rude, that are petulant, that that uh, truly uh, whatever they want they get, and they're spoiled rotten, that you you are leading them down a path that could lead to a short lived life. And why? Because of the decisions that they make will not be good ones, but they will be destructive ones. And you you will see that and and what do you end up having well you know what you end up having when when you raise a child like that you have a hunter biden <laughs> that's what you end up raising and uh it's destructive right <clears throat> and just know that 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 god will carry out what god says he'll do <clears throat> and so i i read this in zechariah chapter 1 today and, and and this is what he tells them, and Zechariah is is prophesying to Israel as they have gotten back from the <clears throat> from being uh, captive for seventy years, and they need to rebuild the temple that they have laid off from doing, and instead just sought their own luxuries instead of dedicating to God what they should. And uh, and he says this in Zechariah one verse four. Be ye not as your fathers, unto whom the former prophets have cried, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Turn ye now from your evil ways and from your evil doings, but they did not hear nor hearken unto me, saith the Lord. Your fathers, where are they? <clears throat> and the prophets, do they live forever? But my words and my statutes, which I commanded my servants, the prophets, did they not take hold of your fathers? And they returned and said, Like as the Lord of hosts thought to do unto us according to our ways and according to our doings, so hath he dealt with us. <clears throat> you know, he's telling us that what God says he will accomplish. And that's <clears throat> something that is hard because often, you know what God tells us? He says, wait on the Lord. But well, we don't want to wait. We We want it now. You know, we're the... We're the microwave generation, you know? We want it now, and, and, and we don't want to wait. And, and obviously, God is saying, wait, and, and know that <clears throat> he will accomplish what he says uh, he will accomplish. And, and so let's, let's wait on him. And, and how do we wait on him? By, by keeping our lamps burning, by uh, <clears throat> keeping the oil in the lamps, right? And 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 so let's keep doing what God tells us that we ought to be doing and staying busy doing the things that, that God tells us we ought to be doing and just live by the promises that God gives us. So, <clears throat> and then the last thing today, 
a little shorter. I'm a little excited. I get to get out of here, go get my daughter, son-in-law, and grandbaby here at the airport soon. But people have asked me this several times. <clears throat> Do you think that the, the hatred for Israel is spiritual? Absolutely. Yes, it is. And <clears throat> those who are Christians today who want to stand on the side of the Palestinians and say that they have a right to do the things that they're doing, they're really messed up in their theology. And they're extremely messed up in, in what God's word says. I, I had a major argument with a guy years ago where he, he, he has pretty much decided that the, the, the church has replaced Israel in his blessings. And so Israel doesn't matter anymore. Look, you can't, I'm sorry, but you cannot read through the scripture and see where God ever turns his back completely on Israel. He never has. Even during their exile, he, he still um, was there and always will be. And, and we need to stand with Israel. <clears throat> but, you know, he says, well, there are Palestinians that are saved. Yes, they are. But they better be pro-Israel and, and they better get out of the the traditions of Hamas and whatever uh, these other um, characters are and, and get away from them. They're saying now that some of those, some of those uh, uh, hostages that have been taken were actually taken by citizens and not Hamas. And so all of them being blinded by hatred. And well, you get into chapter 12 and Revelation 12 and look at this. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. You know who this represents? Israel. Okay? And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. That's the angels. And so there was a third of the angels that uh, became demons when Satan turned on God and wanted to become like God. But now we're seeing also that not only did he want to become God himself and, and lead these angels away, but the big fight was not just in the pride of wanting to become God, but he also wanted to destroy what God was preparing in, in the nation of Israel, in the Messiah coming, and in the salvation of the world. Any, anyone who will believe, right? And it tells us, and, and uh, his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And, and, and it's been a fight ever since. I, I mean, you, you think of Herod killed all the babies from two years old and under. Imagine the devastation of that. And, and Satan has always been after the whole plan of God. And, and she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to the throne. And, and then it just goes on all the way through uh, chapter 12. And, Verse 17, and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. There, there has always been a remnant of Jews that look to the Messiah. There, many Jews today are not believers. Many Jews, if they died today, would end up in a devil's hell. And so we need to understand that. But God still loves that nation, and and he loves them for those that uh, uh, have believed under righteousness like Abraham. Those are what he calls the true Jews. And so uh, we, we need to support and back Israel and pray for their salvation. Not, not a physical salvation, but a spiritual salvation. And uh, this whole battle is all spiritual. I mean, you look at a globe— if you don't think it's spiritual, then look at a globe and just see exactly how small Israel is 
and why there's so much attention on that small, small country. I mean, all these uh, nincompoops here in, in America, the these universities and the and the dipsticks in Hollywood that are <clears throat> crying out, you know, why don't you cry out for the way China is treating people? You know, why, why aren't you crying out for the mistreatment of those people in Africa, how they are treating each other and, and just killing each other? And why, why, aren't, why aren't we caring about all these other countries and the racism and the hatred that is promoted there all day long? Uh, and nothing is brought up, but you have the, the universities all over America today that are teaching such a hatred towards this little country of Israel. Leave them alone, guys. But we know that it's never going to happen because it is a spiritual battle. And Satan hates anything that God loves. And God loves Israel. And so it is a spiritual battle, guys. And we need to pray for Israel. We need to make sure we continue to support Israel. And uh, through our prayers and through the you know asking God to save them and let them see that Jesus is the Messiah. So... Anyway, those are some thoughts today. I uh, hope some of it's a help. hope some of it's an encouragement. Also, I didn't get it, but um, go to Psalm 139. If you want to be encouraged, read Psalm 139. That's a powerful psalm. And, and if you're down and out, Psalm 139 is a great psalm to read. So, hey, it's Thursday. I uh, will not be on here. Uh, tomorrow I'll be getting my James fix and we'll all next week be doing the same thing. So uh, they uh, will head back to Alabama next Friday. So I uh, won't be on here at all now for a little over a week, but uh, let's get out there. Let's tell somebody about Jesus. If you're in Morgan County or close, come on to the service at 1030 on Sunday and uh, 5 o'clock Sunday evening, it's going to be a great day. And uh, be in your place, and you'll find God to uh, is on his throne, and everything will be okay. So God bless you guys, and have a Merry Christmas. Pray for each other, and uh, uh, Lord willing, we'll, uh, we'll see you uh, in a little over a week. God bless. I guess I'll see you next year is what it'll be. God bless you guys.